Hello, and welcome to Nameless Studio. I'm your host, Tyler. Today, we continue working on our 11 by 14 Death Stranding piece, and we are going to be focusing on um, the elements of the um, sort of aging rain um, that is prevalent in the game itself, and the sort of black amorphous goo that tends to coat certain areas in which you find um, the entities known as BTs. And we are going to be doing that with some a few interesting textural sort of uh, elements. So with that in mind, let's get started. Okay, so we are going to start today by taking an exacto knife, surprise, surprise, um, to this uh, piece. And we are going to be taking away quite, not quite a bit, but a little bit um, of the um, iridescent German silver that we put down last time. Um, we are trying to build a lot of outer layers um, to sort of encroach on the sort of inner composition that we have going on here. So we want to break up some of the contrast that we have going on between the silver and the sort of gray substrate we have going on here. So just in a few spots, we're going to sort of uh, uh, take up uh, a bit of that silver uh, just so that we have a, a cleaner background to kind of build some of these next layers upon. And we're also going to add a little bit of, uh, say, dimpling and scarring on some of it to add some interesting texture to a couple spots, um, definitely closer to the, the central sort of composition to sort of hammer, hammer in uh, the more detail-oriented center to the more washed out sort of uh, outliers that we have going on here. We definitely want the the, the inner aspect of this to be the focal point. So that's where a lot of the detail and the texture really starts to come more into focus. Well, the outer elements still have a lot of those, uh, those uh, elements and appearances, but on a much softer scale. So that's what we're just trying to sort of uh, imply here with a lot of these marks that we're doing and the way that we're trying to layer out and almost uh, um, sort of soften the focus of the uh, the outer area of this piece. So right now I'm just taking an exacto knife and almost just sort of like pocking out little bits um, so it actually gets clear down to the white substrate. So we have uh, just a little bit more areas of straight white. Uh, mind you, we don't have much. We have those little bits of the titanium white um, that I put down before um, in the middle here. Other than that, our base color though is mostly gray. Um, so adding just a couple other little touches of a stronger white um, really does sort of draw your eye um, much more to these areas by having such a vibrant white happening in a mostly uh, very similar gray tone piece. Again, it kind of makes it more difficult to discern some areas from another unless you're looking uh, rather long and hard at a piece. Um, and then that is kind of the idea here, is that the, the, the more that you look, the harder that you look, the more you're going to see in this piece. So we are going to now um, add in some effects to to really bring about the idea that there is a, a rain in this world, um, that when it rains, um, it physically ages whatever it touches, be it metal, um, be it ground, be it a person. All of it sort of ages, in the, in the case of metal, it will rust. Um, in the case of a person, they will become older, um, and so on and so forth. Um, and so we want to add those elements to this piece um, without being overly strong. So right now, um, we are taking a we're giving a little bit of a wash to the outside of this piece. If you notice, the wash itself looks like it's black, um, but really it's a lot of just encaustic medium with just a little bit of both um, in the... Um, 
intense carbon black and a little bit of the iridescent German silver. Um, so we're getting a little bit of gray tone. It's not quite a clear coat. Um, it has a little bit of grayness to it, but really we're getting, we're, we're putting that coat down to get a lot of texture right now. You notice I did not fuse it whatsoever. And now we're going to take the um, Neo Pastel 2s, um, which are water soluble, and give a nice wash of white on top of that. Um, so this will do very much, in the end, um, like what we had with the Last of Us piece, um, where we start to get some nice white fissures and details in there after we finish off this layer. So we're going to let that dry on top so it really kind of gets down into the crevices of that layer of encaustic that we did. And now we are going to give it um, a nice burst with the torch. So that will basically fuse the layer of the Neo Pastel and that layer of encaustic together. Um, so all of those little sort of uh, veins of white sort of get embedded in the actual encaustic. So they soften just a little bit, but you still get this, these very line, veiny sort of elements going on there. Um, and in this case, kind of read as, as rain. Um, and as you notice, I'm, I'm really just fusing that outer layer at this point. I'm not really going into the middle part and doing any sort of um, fusing there. I'm trying to keep it as focused on the outer elements as possible but we do still need to integrate both the middle to the outside. So I'm still going over that just quickly, very quickly with the torch, just so that there's a complete fusion of layers. And so as you can see, the layer is now um, much smoother than it was, but we still get a lot of that detail and texture because of the way the white Neo Pastel fused with the encaustic layer on that. And now it's nice and cool to the touch. Great thing about encaustic, everything sets very quickly. And now we're going to add more layers of the Neo color, but we're going to be using black instead um, because we just want to bulk out some of the uh, that sort of black tar goo that sort of coats um, the earth whenever these uh, BT creatures um, tend to be around. Um, and so we're just going to to add some more liquidy layers um, that will eventually be kind of pulled back a little bit, covered, um, but we really want to kind of give some more foreground um, sort of grounding elements overall um, because we have a very focused middle point here, but it really kind of, there's, there's a a disconnect between how much is happening in the middle versus how um, sort of open the rest of it is. So we need to tie these two elements to each other a little bit more. So adding more foreground and detail elements around it will help sort of balance the two a bit more. So I'm just kind of letting um, this neo color move a little bit. The thing that I'm most concerned about when it dries, um, the, the spots where the Neo color has um, congregated more, we're going to get a much stronger um, sense of that black, where in other areas it will kind of dissipate as it dries. So I want that, that sort of heavy sort of wash mark with the black to be in a certain spot. Um, we don't want to be too strong in one area or another. Um, we want it to sort of balance out overall. So keeping an eye on how this dries is fairly important. And that is all for us today. Please let me know what you think of how this piece is going down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe to Nameless Studio. As always, I've been Tyler. Until next time. Be seeing you.